Jewish. That's all I could say. <laughs> and I do know Michael Sarah. I knew James Franco. I knew Craig. Uh, Craig somebody. You know. You know everybody. For, you know all those guys who did super bad. Um, the uh, something end of the world raid related. I for yeah. This is the end. They did that. I just forgot the guy's name. Who is it? Yeah, just put it in the comments below. Anyway, so, the next movie, uh, Finding Dory. I gotta say, that movie, the Disney Pixar, the short uh, Piper is nominated for an Academy Award for Best uh, Animated Mo Short Film. So, wish you luck in that. <laughs> anyway, so, I gotta say, Finding Dory. I feel bad that movie didn't get nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Film. And I just gotta ask. Why? Like, seriously, it has 94% on Rotten Tomatoes and has made more money than Zootopia. Hmm, like, seriously. I, I, and I get it has 7.5 on IMDb, but come on. I mean, it's really the critics that care that should put the, you know, the movie that do the nominations, not the people. That's only for People Choice Awards. Hmm, but I just gotta say... I mean, for a movie like that to not get nominated, I'm really, you know, just at all hmm, shocked. Sorry, I had to turn off my lightsaber. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, why? Like, seriously. And, I mean, but because overall, I give it 10 out of 10. I mean, as a sequel, I mean, it was just so fantastic and so spectacular. Like, animation, the new characters were also really good. And here's the thing, you guys, I bet you guys, for those bronies watching this video, you may think, uh, you may ask who my favorite character is, and for those of the bronies that are watching, may say, it's Becky. Because it was played by one of the most famous brony musicians in the fandom, Black Griffin. Which, by the way, I got this hat, <clears throat> which, by the way, <clears> hmm. <throat> I got this hat that was, you know, at BronyCon, signed by Black Griffin Basic, Emma Show, and Emma Show Creeper, as you can see. And I know you can't read it backwards, but what that says is, thanks for stealing my hat with a smiley face and a winky face, because that is Michelle, Cre this right here is Michelle Creeper's hat, you guys, and I got it. I was the last people to get a hat, and it was Michelle Cre Creeper's hat. And I gotta say, it was Karma because I happen to be a really, really big fan of hers. You know, ever since I became a part of the fandom because of, you know, how much of a role she has. Not only on the show, but in the fandom as well. And I respect it so much. So yeah. So yeah, and if you want some of those, go to creeperbrown.com. But anyway, so I gotta say... Black Griffin played a character by the name of Becky. He w and for those of you who don't know who Becky is, that was the the loon that you, that was the like the the cl the careless loon. Like there he something tells me he Becky was supposed to be like finding Dory's derpy, like something like that. Like a character who's like completely careless but everybody who but so enjoyable to love, hmm. to hang around with and you know to love. And I just gotta say, he really, I mean, for being the first ever brony to star in, you know, in a Hollywood film, I mean, I gotta say, you did a really good job, dude. And I have to tell you, dude, when I heard that, uh, when I first heard that he was in the movie, I was like, wow. But then when I heard, but I also heard that he wasn't in the credits, I was like, huh. But then when I realized who Becky really, but then I had to take a flashback, and when I realized who Becky really was in the trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, he didn't get credit? Because to be honest, and I'm saying this not as a fan of Black Griffin and not as a brony, but as a movie critic, you deserve credit, Black Griffin. You should have gotten credit for your performance because you were used for a significant amount of time. And not only that, you were also used for a significant role. Like, you were the character that tried to, you know, guide Nemo and Marlin to get to Dory because after they were split up. And, you know, I felt like he should have gotten... And, and, you know, for a character who is you know, who has a significant role and used a significant amount of time, they should definitely get credit no matter who the who the actor is. 
Like, especially no matter who the actor is. Like, you could be a complete nobody and star in a Hollywood film and just, you know, and, you know, and can be the main character and yet still not credited. Like, seriously. And that pisses me off. Like, seriously. For those actors who are complete nobodies out there that are used for significant roles or roles for a significant amount of times, you deserve credit. Movies should give people credit. And so, Black Griffin, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart, as a critic myself, you deserve credit. But overall, congrats on getting the role, and I appraise your performance. So, moving, so moving on to the rating, if I had to rate this, 10 out of 10. I mean, it was just downright good, and it should have been nominated, for, and it should, definitely should have been an Oscar nominated. At least a Golden Globe, for crying out loud. When I did, saw it did not get a nominated for a Golden Globe, I was like, what the hell? But oh well. Anyway, so... Moving on to the last movie in our 2016 Rewind. And that's, this right here is definitely my favorite movie of 2016. And probably one of my favorite animated movies of all time. And that is Zootopia. Hmm. And here's the thing, you guys. Here's the, I'm going to give you the whole story. Hmm. Right now we're like 14 and a half minutes in. And, but I'm going to give you the whole story. I actually wasn't going to see the movie myself, but I have to say, thanks to AC Racebest's, um, by the way, AC Racebest, for those of you guys uh, don't know him, he happens to be a brony who makes videos of reaction, of reactions, and he's also known for making Demolition Derby videos, check him out. And right now he has over 100,000 subscribers. He's really popular. He's one of the most famous bronies on the internet. So check his channel out. It's really amazing. It's a really good channel. And he's also, not only is he known for being one of the most popular bronies in the world, he's also known for being probably one of the biggest Zootopia fans out there. Like seriously, who goes to a theater 26 times? Like seriously, the most times I ever went to a theater for the same movie was three. Only three. I was planning to see Finding Dory four times, but it only happened once. I only I only saw it once. Sadly, yeah, I really want to see. I'm trying to break that record. I'm hopefully this year. My goal this year is to break the record and hopefully see a movie four times this year. Because so far it's a three-way tie for three. <laughs> and I don't know what movies it is. I just know I have seen three movies three times in my life. But anyway, so I just gotta say, without his fandomness for the movie, or fanboyness, I should say, and I still cannot believe he's not canonly called the, you see what I did there, officially, canonly, yeah, anyway, forget it. Um, he's not officially called the number one fan of Zootopia, like seriously, if anybody deserves to be called the number one fan of Zootopia, it's definitely him. But anyway, so he made a parody video of Buy Everything, I mean, of Try Everything, at, called Buy Everything, which was sung by Black Griffin, who I mentioned before, played Becky um, in Finding Dory. And so, and so AC Racebest wrote the lyrics, and, you know, he posted a video of himself buying all the merchandise. And I gotta say, it was just so hysterical, just all his, like, craving for his, I want this, I really want this, give it to me. Hmm. Like, I gotta say... I mean, it was just so hysterical, and you know, that kind of got me, that kind of got me curious, but then I just still denied it, I was still denying it, I'm like, no, because the reason why I didn't want to see it, you guys, is because, I mean, seriously, I mean, Disney movies and talking animals, that's basically Disney stereotype, a movie about talking animals. Like, seriously, why the heck would... I already seen a Disney movie with talking animals, like, numerous times. Numerous movies do that. What? And, you know, the thing is, though, and then I literally... So, I felt like it was overrated. I'm sorry, but I really felt like it was kind of overrated. I even said that on the com one of the comments in one of AC Rexpress's con videos. At a who, it was a who's line at Winnie Cine Pony Con, and 
and I said on the comment page that I thought this one is overrated. I just didn't like the trailer, and so I'm not going to watch it. But luckily, one YouTuber stepped up to the plate and replied back to me, and he says, you should you should go watch it. You might like it. And so that's why made me watch it, and I downright love it, and I regret everything that I said about the trick about the movie before when I saw the trailer like seriously it was more than a Walt Disney movie about talking animals it w it had a story it had adventure it had characters that you would love to watch and you know connect with and enjoy <laughs> their characterization and so I mean everything about it was just so spot on I love the song try everything made by that sung by Shakira and was written by one of my favorite female pop artists and not one of my favorite female artists of all time. Artists. Sorry for my English. Um, Sia. Sia Furler. And you know what's strange? When I was listening to the song, when at the end of the song, I was like imagining what would it be if Sia sang the song? And then in the after the song was over and they went to the credits... They said, try everything written by Sia. And I was like, oh my gosh, I jinxed it. I jinxed it. I called it. Like, seriously, I thought that was pretty amazing <laughs> that she wrote the film, that she wrote the song. And I'm like, and yeah, and I still cannot believe it. Like, seriously, guys. But anyway, so, so overall, I gotta say, everything was perfect. Animation, voice acting, I mean, everything was just spectacular. I give 9.5 out of 10. And then, all of a sudden, vinyl scratch sound effect, which, and then people, you guys are shocked, and you're like, wait, 9.5 out of 10? What about 10 out of 10? Well, here's the thing. As a fan, I give it 10 out of 10. But as a movie critic, I give it 9 to 9.5 out of 10. Because the thing is, you guys, there's one thing that was so unoriginal and repetitive throughout the film. And besides talking animals in Walt Disney movies. And that's over the past few Di Walt Disney Studio movies. Walt Disney Studio movies. Um, they had the same ending twist, you guys. Like, they have the same ending twist. Like, in Frozen, Big Hero 6, and Zootopia, they all had the similar ending twist. Where one character who the audience and the other characters think is the bad guy turns out to be innocent. And another character who the audience thinks is innocent turns out to be the bad guy in the end. And that's the whole twist. And that's happened in Frozen, Big Hero 6, and Zootopia. And if this continues, it's just going to be a trend and... You know, who the heck wants to see, you know, a movie that has the same ending over and over again? It's just so dumb. Like, seriously, that's the same thing with horror. That's, like, seriously, if Walt Disney Studios does that again, it's going to be just as annoying as the endings to Paranormal Activity. And those movies suck. Hmm. Except for the first one, obviously. Hmm. Hmm. But overall, I still really love the movie. It's downright one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Definitely top five. And it's downright my favorite film of 2016 overall. Hmm. Narrowly beating Deadpool and narrowly beating Finding Dory. But anyway, with that being said, that wraps up episode one of... <laughs> of Fritz Rolly 732's movie reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, me making a fool out of myself on not knowing the voice, the main the voice, the actor who played Hank. I mean, Frank, it was Frank. Frank is Frank the Sausage, yeah. Who played Frank from Sausage Party. I mean, I'm sorry that I don't know the guy's name. All I do know is that, hmm, I do know he's Jewish and I do know he has like, he has curly hair, he wears glasses, I just, I forgot what his name was. Can somebody just please explain to me in the comments section below. And if you like this movie review, press like. If you dislike it, dislike. More episodes coming on the way. And if you, and if you want to see more episodes, click in the subscribe button below. And if you want to see all the other videos, also click and subscribe. <laughs> and also, if you want to see, get notified to any channels click on the bell as well <laughs> hey that rhymes
and I didn't even say it in a rap. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. And with that being said, I tip my hat to you guys, and I'll see you guys later.